All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, YouTube, wherever you are, at whatever time you're viewing this. Uh, we hope you're all doing well under quarantine. So my name is Rosh, and I'm putting together a video series on how to program an Axe FX3. Uh, so I felt like it would be um, great to give back to the Fractal community and share some of my approaches on how to build presets um, and what I use for some of my clients. Um, so some of my clients have included uh, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, Dweezil Zappa. So uh, I do a lot of programming for guitar rigs out here in the Los Angeles area, and I just want to show some of my approaches and kind of some of my best practices. Uh, and this is more like for the basics. Uh, I would be more than happy to get into some advanced stuff, but let's talk about how to build a basic preset. In the last episode, we just talked about, you know, how some of the approaches with the reverb as well as basic presets. So let's talk about getting just a good clean sound and some of my approaches to that. So let's go to quick build. After you clear all the presets, you're going to have a blank grid. Uh, what you want is an input, an output. I don't know why it's doing that. And then you want an amp and a cap. And then let's connect all the shunts for now. Of course, you can always make the preset bigger, but in the interest of what we're doing, we'll do this. And then um, let's go to that. And so let's talk about getting a clean sound and kind of what these approaches are. So sometimes you may have some residual from the last preset you built. Oops, we don't want to do that. Uh, let's put an amp back in there. All right, so connect everything and you should get some sound. And then what you want to do is you want to reset the channel on this block in case there's some residual. So right now it uh, defaulted to the ODS 100 clean. Let's talk about how a master volume amp kind of works. So. Right now what you're hearing is the USA clean. Um, you have your standard drive knob, so this would add more drive, but for a lot of clean amps, even if you crank the drive all the way up, it doesn't really distort. So generally I'll leave the master volume alone and then I'll use the level parameter to level out the amp. So once I get the tone kind of where I want it, so it seems pretty good just for like a pretty neutral clean sound maybe throw in a bright switch add some chime to it and then um, we want to make sure that we're using a good cab this so with most Mesa Boogie amps usually a 412 will work and um, let's use a Cali why not Sounds pretty good right there. Maybe turn that bright switch off. And then now you notice the level's pretty low. So what we want to do is use that meter. We got about maybe, I don't know, 10 dB or so to make up. Maybe just a little bit more. Pretty good, just pretty generic, neutral, clean sound. Just like we did in the last video, uh, I also want to make sure that we have our low cut probably around 80 to 100, and then our high cut around maybe 8,000. Yeah. So now we'll add a reverb. And uh, I usually, again, do the rules from the last video, 3 dB, 50% mix, and then use the input gain on to determine how much reverb you want. I'll just throw in some generic settings here. I'll dial that back. Cool. Um, maybe a little less reverb. As you can tell, even if I dig in on the bridge pickup, it doesn't really distort. So as you noticed, uh, I mainly never really touch the master volume, but I use the level and the input drive to kind of shape the tone and then add more volume. Let's say we're using an amp that kind of grinds up as you turn the drive up. 
Here's the ODS clean. It's a lot louder, so let's bring that volume down a little bit. As you turn the drive up, it's going to start distorting. And obviously that's probably clean the input. Yep. So we'll want to bring this master volume down. As you heard, I cranked the drive up. And it definitely started distorting. Now, if we take the drive back down to where it cleans up, we can use the master volume to kind of shape the tone a little bit. So let's say you're going for maybe a little more like Stonesy, kind of grinded, you know, kind of almost edge of breakup kind of clean sound. So when you dig in, it distorts. But if you pick lightly, it's pretty nice, chimey, clean. So you can use the master volume to kind of shape the tone a little bit. And as you turn the master volume up, it's gonna make the um, power amp tubes work a little harder. So. so now the ratio between these two knobs right here really can help shape the tone. As you noticed, if it was at five, it's kind of thin sounding. So let's say you want it just to get a little thicker in the low end right there. So now you got kind of more of like a... That's really sensitive to, uh, you know, rolling off your volume. And then of course use the output to really level out how much volume you need. So we'll just turn that up just a hair. And then now you got, you know, a really versatile tone. And I'm using the volume knob on my guitar to really just kind of shape that tone a little bit. And of course, you know, you can use some overdrive pedals in front of it to give it a little bit more. So, as you can see, the master volume on a clean sound, you, it can shape the tone depending on the amp that you're using. So, certain amps that break up really easily, you, you can crank the master volume, or if they're breaking up really easily and you actually want to clean it up, um, you can use the master volume and bring that down. So, for example, like the, the Lone Star, uh, this is kind of one of my favorite amps in in the fractal because it really, really captures what kind of is like about the Lone Star. So a lot of people say, well, this doesn't really sound like a clean sound. And in a way, true, but if you actually put the drive on the regular amp here, it also just it starts distorting. So if anything, if you leave it all the way down, now it's pretty clean, but the problem is you need to, of course, get the level higher. So now at this point, you have two options. You either can crank up the master volume which makes the power amp tubes in the amp work a little harder. And it can definitely shape the tone in a very specific way. Just like a little warmer clean. And you can turn that master volume up even more. And the thing is, even if you did this on the real amp, I mean, you're never, it would be really loud in the room, but the cool thing was with the fractal, um, you still have this level parameter, which is totally just digital volume. You don't have to worry about it distorting anything. So now you got a little bit of a warmer clean sound. Amp's kind of dark, so I'd probably, you know, maybe boost the treble up a little bit, turn the bass down, get some presence in there. And as you dig in, it starts to break up a little bit. So that's kind of a warmer clean sound, but let's say you want it really clean. So, uh, some, so guys like Prince used to use this amp too, and as you, as you can hear, it's clean, but it's just not loud enough. So now you just crank the level, and it's not making the power amp tubes work any harder. So now you got kind of a Nile Rodgers Prince kind of clean. 
and I'm using a Les Paul, so if you use a single coils, it would actually sound a, a little bit better. So, so there are some approaches to getting a good, clean sound in the fractal. So the main takeaway is um, I usually leave the master volume alone and then use just the input drive and the level to get the tone where I want it at the volume I want it. Now the master volume, the way I approach it is this just shapes the tone a little bit. Turn it up a little bit more, get a little the power amp tubes to work a little harder. And then digging in just gives it a little bit more girth, a little bit more. You can really start hearing the low end of the tubes break up. So anyways, that's episode two. Uh, for building a preset, there's a clean sound. We'll definitely get more in depth and some of my other approaches. So the next episode we'll do uh, non-master volume amps, uh, my favorite types of amps. So. All right, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to reach out. And if you have any subjects you want me to cover, I would be more than happy to cover them in future videos. All right, take care.